Hey. Oh, by the way, Mario, I love your um, enhanced podcast. That thing was so cool. He had musical excerpts highlighted really? and stuff like that. And then he had a full performance later on uh, of him performing that piece. I need to, I need to get those. We, we, of him performing the music, that, that uh, Copeland um, piece. Oh, that was great. It was wonderful. Check it out. I don't know. I don't know. But that was really good. I, I was, I was uh, watching that at school this week. Cool. Um, that was really good. I am, my name is Mario Arrow. I'm here today to talk to you about podcasting, and I just wanted to play some of those excerpts for you. For those of you who weren't familiar with what a podcast is, uh, I wanted to play a little, a very little cross-section of what podcasts are all about uh, in this uh, opening to my presentation. Uh, my, again, my name is Mario Harrell. I'm working on my PhD at the University of Oklahoma in piano pedagogy. This fall, I will be teaching class piano and piano pedagogy at Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches, Texas. Uh, while I was looking for a job this past year, I gained a new interest in slash hobby, although it, it's kind of turned into more of a professional development type of thing, and, uh, and that was podcasting. So I'm here to talk about podcasting and what it's all about. Before we begin, I thought I was curious um, um, how many people know what a podcast here is? Okay. That's okay. Um, and how many people have actually listened to podcasts other than what I just played here? Okay. okay. Not, not that many. And how many people here have produced their own podcasts? <laughs> Thank you, Mason. Right. I have to confess that I'm fairly new to all of this as well, um, so I'm also learning along with you guys. But as is the case with all new technologies, there are opportunities to play around with it. And that's one of the things that I've been doing for the past nine months. I've been learning more about podcasting and exploring its possibilities as it relates to music education. And hopefully I can share with you what knowledge that I have about it and you can all build upon it. So why did I get interested in podcasting initially? Well, um, in a nutshell, <laughs> I hate radio. Does anyone else here hate listening to the radio? Okay. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one here. I mean, I don't hate the device itself. I think radio technology is actually quite amazing. What I don't like is the content of most commercial radio stations. It's usually run by business people who think they know what we want to listen to. You, you also have obnoxious DJs who are more or less human puppets for big companies. Uh, I should know one of my brothers is one of those human puppets. <laughs> don't tell them I said so. Okay. And there are, of course, way too many advertisements. I hate hearing commercials while I'm listening to a certain music or program on the radio. So podcasting was originally conceived as an alternative to commercial radio, and that's how I got interested in it. I was fascinated by the prospect that anyone with a computer and a microphone could host their own radio show, a real grassroots media. And I think the rebellious side of me is proud to be part of what I call the podcasting revolution. So. Uh, the word itself, podcast, is uh, quite interesting because it's garnered a lot of publicity in the last year or two years. Um, according to the editors of the uh, new Oxford Dictionary, it was proclaimed the 2005 word of the year. Every year they pick a new word that wasn't included in their dictionary and they proclaim it to be uh, the word of the year. So podcast has gained that distinction. It edged out such distinguished runners-up as bird flu and IED. Does anyone know what IED is? Of course. Yes? Well, it's that uh, explosive device. Yes, improvised ink explosive device. Very popular in Iraq, I hear these days. <laughs> so, uh, well, what is, what is podcasting? Some of you are still wondering, what is this all about? Um, it's kind of a pseudo word, since it wasn't really included in the dictionary up until this past year. It's a combination of the words broadcasting and iPod. And it is a way for people to subscribe, selectively subscribe to audio or video content over the internet. And when I say subscribe, um, I don't mean that there's any fee or anything that you have to pay to get the subscription. Uh, pretty much all the podcasts that are available on the internet are free of charge. You can download them for free. All it simply means is that you can selectively choose to have content 
automatically delivered to you, like you subscribe to a newspaper and the newspaper is on your doorstep uh, whenever the newspaper is published. Uh, when podcasting began, this automatically delivered content was digital audio files, but as we'll see later on, there's more to it than that. Um, I also have, I think, a definition on one of my handouts if you uh, wish to uh, look over there. There's, you know, there's no particular set um, definition. Um, and the reason why the, uh, the pod got into the word podcasting was that this content could be transferable to a mobile device like an iPod. Um, that you could listen to it whenever, wherever you were. You didn't have to sit at home on your computer and listen to it. You could just transfer it to your pod, iPod or other mobile uh, device. Uh, some phones actually can play podcasts you now. Mobile phones can play podcasts, and other digital audio devices, digital MP3 players, can play um, podcasts as well. And you might be thinking, well, so what? So what does this have to do with me? What does this have to do with music education? Let me run a few numbers by you guys here. Um, I got my first iPod in 2003, and since then I was just amazed at how many college students and high school students were walking around with these silly like white earbuds stuck in their heads. Um, I, I teach a couple of music appreciation classes this past year at uh, the University of Oklahoma, and I would guess that maybe 80 to 90 percent of them actually come into class with their iPods. Um, here are a couple statistics. Uh, from Steve Jobs, uh, Apple CEO, uh, his keynote address from the Macworld Expo in, from this past January. Um, going back two holiday seasons ago, there were 4.5 million iPods that were sold worldwide. Uh, and that number grew uh, in the 2005 holidays to include 14 million iPods that were sold. And that brought up the uh, whole total of the year 2005 uh, to be 32 million iPods that were sold just in the year 2005 alone. Just in the year 2005 alone. Bringing the grand total of iPods sold since it was first released in 2001 to 42 million iPods being sold. So you can see that this number is actually growing exponentially. So if uh, your students don't have an iPod or some type of uh, digital audio player, uh, portable digital audio player, uh, they'll are probably part of, either part of this population or they're going to be part of this population uh, sometime in the near future. So with this, I think, comes opportunity as, for us as music educators uh, to help keep students engaged in the music and the material that we're presenting through this new medium. That being said, I do want to clear up one um, common misconception or assumption about podcasting. And that is that uh, you do not, I repeat, you do not need an iPod in order to listen to or to create a podcast. All right. You don't need an iPod. It's part of, a, I guess, just a misnomer or uh, an unfortunate association made with the device due to this uh, kind of buzzword that podcast has become. Um, what do you need to podcast? Um, in order to listen to a podcast, uh, you need a computer with high-speed internet access. You're going to be downloading um, sometimes very big audio files, MP3s, MPEG-4 audio files that can be in a very large in file size. Um, podcasting software, I'll talk to you a little bit about what podcasting software is. And again, I do want to stress that it is optional. You don't have to have a portable digital music player like the iPod in order to consume or listen to these podcasts. In order to create a podcast, you uh, probably more so than ever, you need a computer with high-speed internet access, you need digital audio recording software with a microphone, and you need a server to host your audio files and what we call an RSS feed, an RSS feed. Now, this is probably the most geeky and technically complex part of my presentation, so I hope you can bear with me here. Um, what RSS feeds, uh, you might seeing these particular chiplets or icons on various websites. And what these uh, uh, chiplets mean is that on the web page, they have what's called an RSS feed embedded into it. Uh, RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. Not to confuse it with just simple syndication. <laughs> really simple 
simplification. They really want to make it really simple for you. Okay. I'm, I'm always boggled by these like, terms that they come up with here. Has anyone ever posted or listened to a digital audio file on a web page? Yes. Okay. Or even just listen to a, an audio file on a web page. Well, an RSS feed uh, is really what distinguishes podcasting from just that simple act of posting an audio file on a website. RSS is basically a code, much like HTML for web pages. Um, has anyone ever designed a web page here and used HTML? Okay. If you use HTML and you've written HTML code, you could probably write RSS code as well. Or if you're lazy like me, uh, you can find some type of blog writing software uh, or program that will automatically generate the RSS code for you. I use Blogger as my um, blog writing software. And in essence, the RSS feed is a format for syndicating content over the internet. There's that word again, syndication. What comes to your mind when you think of the word syndication? Seinfeld. Seinfeld, okay. What else is syndicated? Lawrence Welk. Lawrence Welk? I don't know, on PBS? I'm, I'm only seeing it there. But Seinfeld, MASH, I Love Lucy, all those television programs are syndicated through various local TV networks. Okay? They don't record a new episode of I Love Lucy every time it's broadcast on your local network. It's just simply syndicated. The, runner, the people who run the network decide when um, they want to uh, broadcast that syndicated program. And that's basically what uh, RSS feeds are, um, how they're related to the podcast. So with RSS feeds, users can select the information that they want to receive rather than browsing on the web uh, to search for it each time. Initial uses of RSS were limited to text files like news articles and blog entries where you can read them in a concise and efficient manner. But with podcasting software, RSS allows uh, people to receive audio content automatically without having to go to a website and go get it. So I mentioned podcasting programs earlier. And these are just uh, a sample of some podcasting programs. Uh, iTunes is without a doubt probably the most popular podcasting program there is out there today. It is free, uh, available on both the Macintosh and Windows platforms. Um, it started off as just a music player, and then it, it evolved into uh, the most popular online uh, digital uh, music, um, music store, excuse me, where you could buy and download music legally, and uh, now it's supported podcasts for almost a year, starting uh, since June 2005. There's also this other program, Juice, it's formerly known as iPodder. It's also a cross-platform podcast receiver. It, um, uh, you can download podcasts through Juice, um, and uh, that's also on Windows and Macintosh platforms. And there's also um, websites like Yahoo Podcasts, that's at located at podcast.yahoo.com. Uh, podcast Pickle, Podcast Alley, there are a couple that I list on both the paper handout and the electronic handout on the CDs that are located here on this table if you want to uh, help yourself to one. Um, what separates Yahoo Podcasts, uh, these web-based uh, podcasting programs from things like iTunes and Juice, you can listen to the podcast right on the website of Yahoo Podcasts, uh, but iTunes and Juice allow you to uh, transfer that audio content to your digital music player like your iPod. So you can listen to it on the go. So what I wanted to do now was to demonstrate to you how you find, subscribe, and listen to podcasts, particularly for those of you who have never done this before. And I thought I'd start off with probably the most um, popular um, podcast, podcasting program, and that being iTunes. 